Welcome to Clinical Minute. Jennifer is a 43-year-old preschool teacher and a new patient presenting to your clinic for her annual well woman visit. She was divorced two years ago and has a nine-year-old daughter. Jennifer began a new relationship about six months ago. She and her partner are monogamous and are using condoms for contraception. Jennifer tells you that she is healthy with no significant medical issues to report. She takes a multivitamin daily. She is unsure on the timing, but thinks her last pap test was three years ago. She tells you it was negative. She reports light but regular menses, and her last menstrual period was two weeks ago. You do not have access to Jennifer's medical records. Do you recommend cervical cancer screening at this time? The evidence-based guidelines confirm that Jennifer should indeed be screened. Co-testing with PAP and HPV tests is recommended for women who are age 30 and older. HPV testing is not recommended for younger women for a variety of reasons. There is a high prevalence of HPV infection in women under 30, but it is usually transient and will be cleared in a relatively short time. It takes a considerable amount of time for persistent infection to cause precancerous cell changes. Most young women with an HPV infection will not develop cancer, so deferring HPV testing until age 30 minimizes unnecessary invasive testing in young women. Most HPV infections are cleared by the immune system. In fact, about 90% of infections are cleared within two years. However, persistence of HPV infection may lead to abnormal clonal progression in the cervical epithelium and, eventually, to invasive cervical carcinoma. The HPV type affects both the likelihood of persistence and the risk of progression of neoplastic cells to precancer. HPV type 16 persists longer than other types and also is especially carcinogenic, with a risk of CIN3 of 40% at 5 years. You offer Jennifer some educational brochures about the HPV and PAP tests. You tell her that the PAP test looks for precancer changes while the HPV test detects infection that can potentially lead to precancer. You clarify that it is recommended that women her age receive both tests. You also recommend testing for chlamydia, since Jennifer has a new sexual partner. She readily agrees, and you perform the PAP, HPV, and chlamydia tests. During the discussion, Jennifer asks whether the HPV test you described is related to the vaccine that her daughter's pediatrician recently mentioned. You explain the connection and tell her that the HPV vaccine is recommended for boys and girls between the ages of 9 and 26. When vaccinated individuals become sexually active, the HPV vaccine will prevent infection from four of the most dangerous types of HPV. Research has shown that the HPV vaccine is most effective when administered before the onset of sexual activity. In addition, more than 80% of sexually active adolescents become exposed to HPV within three years of sexual activity. For these reasons, the initiation of HPV vaccination is optimal for boys and girls at 11 or 12 years old. Individuals who did not receive the three-dose series can be vaccinated until 26 years of age. A week later, you receive Jennifer's test results. The cytology and chlamydia come back negative, but the HPV is positive. What is the recommended management at this point? This table shows the ASCCP guidelines for the use of HPV DNA testing as an adjunct to cytology for primary screening of women aged 30 and older. Note the two options on the bottom row. Women aged 30 and older with negative cytology and positive HPV testing should either undergo repeat co-testing in 12 months or immediate reflex genotyping for HPV 16 and 18. You telephone Jennifer to report the results. She becomes upset and says, So my boyfriend cheated on me? I really thought I could trust him. What do you say in response? 
You tell Jennifer that virtually all people who are sexually active have an HPV infection at some point. Your positive result does not mean that your partner was unfaithful. There is no way of knowing how long you or he has had the infection. You also reassure her that most women who have HPV do not develop abnormal cells or cancer. It is women who have HPV in their cells for a long time who are at a greater risk for developing abnormal cells or cancer. You explain to Jennifer that you will schedule her for a special test to help you both to best determine the next steps. You order reflex genotyping for HPV 16 and 18. A week later, the genotyping results come back as negative for 16 or 18. How should you proceed with Jennifer's case? The recommended follow-up for negative reflex testing for women over 30 is repeat co-testing in 12 months. If the result had been positive for either type 16 or 18, the recommended management would have been immediate colposcopy. You call Jennifer and reassure her that the test was negative for the two types of HPV with the greatest risk of causing cancer. You explain that she should have the HPV and pap test repeated again in one year. You recommend that she use condoms with any new sexual partners since condom use can reduce the risk of HPV transmission and prevent other sexually transmitted infections. Because the virus is transmitted via skin-to-skin -skin contact, condoms do not completely prevent infection. However, a 2006 study of female university students found that consistent condom use significantly reduced the risk of HPV infection. While you're on the phone, Jennifer tells you that her mother recently had an annual visit with her gynecologist but did not have a pap or HPV test. Her 67-year-old mother was widowed five years ago and has recently begun dating. Jennifer asks for your advice, saying, Shouldn't she get tested too? You explain to Jennifer that women age 65 or older who have been tested consistently with negative results no longer require cervical cancer screening. Cervical cancer is very rare in this population and testing is not recommended, even if a woman has a new sexual partner. The specific criteria for exiting from cervical cancer screening are being age 65 or older and having adequate negative prior screening, which includes three negative pap tests or two negative co-tests within the last 10 years. Additionally, follow-up is recommended after CIN 2 or 3 for 20 years, regardless of age. And if the PAP result shows ASCUS and the HPV test is negative, the recommendation is to continue screening with PAP and HPV in 12 months. Jennifer thanks you for your help and tells you that she will see you again in a year.